inside this gallery, a celebrated artist is being remembered. Mr Carroll's widow is proud of her late husband's legacy and disappointed that some of his paintings are now being sold off at inflated prices in the United States. When I heard that painting was sold overseas, it's not right, you know, it's not right. Mr Carroll painted this work in 2019, originally selling it through his art centre, Urnabella, for about $6,000. A few years later, and after his death, it wound up here at an Indigenous art auction held in New York by Sotheby's. 85, back in the room. 90,000. Selling to Tim's telephone at $100,000. Thank you. Sold. Thank you and congratulations. The canvas sold for 30 times its original price. When they're selling it for big money, that money belonged to the person who did the painting. My husband passed away, but it still belonged to my kids, for me and for my daughters and son and grandkids. Mr Carroll's family would have received cash from the artwork sale if it had been resold in Australia. This is a Vincent Namatura. And a royalty scheme of 5% on secondary art sales has been in place here for 15 years. The purpose of that is to recognise an artist's ongoing rights in their work and to provide them with additional income when their um, visual art works are resold. Copyright agency collects the money on behalf of living and deceased artists. Royalties are only paid on art resold for more than $1,000 through an auction house or gallery. Nothing is paid if the seller bought the work before 2010. The agency collected $1.8 million last financial year, its highest amount yet. To date, it's recouped nearly $14 million on behalf of almost 3,000 artists. It's benefiting artists at all stages of their career, all around the country. 65% of the artists that receive royalties are Indigenous. 35% of the artists that receive royalties are located in Central Australia um, and the Northern Territory. I think it's most likely that this painting will sell offshore, yes. Yeah. Art dealer Delan Davidson says that most buyers and sellers are happy to pay. Initially, there was great resentment in, in the market without question. It was, it was viewed as, um, as a kind of an insidious tax. The indirect benefits far outweigh the cost. It was recently bought through auction for about... Mr Davidson sells works by the late Emily Inware. This painting on the international market is now worth um, $140,000. So if this were to sell internationally, um, the seller does not have to um, pay resale royalty. The federal government is giving copyright the ability to recoup cash in 17 countries with resale schemes from April. This includes France, Italy and the United Kingdom. I think it's a great idea because if an artist is selling in London or Sydney, it shouldn't matter. Our clients, they're collectors and they're passionate collectors um, and they want to see the artists that they love and that they collect flourish. But the world's biggest art market isn't included in the offshore deal. The US does not have a resale royalty right um, and our legislation requires that when we enter these arrangements, it has to be with the country that has legislation. Sotheby's declined to comment, but its website says it adheres to resale royalties in markets where they apply. Back in Central Australia, the art centre that represents the late Mr Carroll is urging overseas sellers to make donations to his family, while his wife, who is an artist in her own right, has a message for the global art market. What about the person who's, who did everything? put it in a pa canvas, paint it. Rewarding the origins of who makes what's sold.